In a recent interview given by Kyrylo Budanov, who heads the main intelligence directorate of Ukraine, HUR, for the NV medium, it came to light that the Ukrainian armed forces had made three unsuccessful attempts to regain control of key Energodar sites and the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant. The first of these operations took place in August 2022 and involved an attempt to establish a base on the left bank of the region. The mission was carried out by a group of commandos who attempted to cross the Kachovka Basin by boat. Unfortunately, the action failed forcing the forces to retreat. After this unsuccessful approach, Ukraine's intelligence services made two more landing attempts on the left bank of the Russian-controlled Dnipro River. One of these operations involved soldiers from the International Legion, specialists in their craft. However, constant pressure from the enemy and the need for the Russians to deploy heavy military equipment along the shoreline showed how difficult the task was. In addition, during Russia's spring invasion of Ukraine in 2022, Russian forces took control of the Zaporizhia nuclear power plant and the neighboring town of Enerhodar. Although the plant site is monitored by representatives of the International Atomic Energy Agency IIEA, they have limited access to all sectors of the complex. The organization's leadership has expressed concerns about the safety of the facility. Vladimir Saldo, the pro-Russian governor of the Kherson region, reported via his channel on Telegram that a prominent representative of the United Russia Party, which is in power in Russia, was the victim of a car explosion. Vladimir Malov, known as a local ally of Russian President Vladimir Putin, was killed in what Russian sources describe as a terrorist attack. He died after being transported to a hospital in Ukraine. Saldo, expressing sadness over Malov's death, declared that the government would take all necessary steps to provide support to the deceased's relatives and bring about the punishment of those responsible for the act. Prior to October 4th of the year, 2022, Saldo, though a native of Ukraine but a former ally of Russia, managed the administration in the region under occupation. There have been attempts to assassinate him in the past. According to information provided by AFP, the city of Kherson experienced Russian artillery shelling on Saturday evening, injuring nearly 12 people, including a toddler. According to Kherson's governor, Oleksandr Prokudin, the city was the target of multiple attacks that left 11 people wounded. One of the victims, a 27-year-old woman with her nine-month-old daughter, was transported to the hospital in moderate condition. A 33-year-old Red Cross worker was also among the injured. Prokudin shared video footage on Telegram showing damage to one of the local residential buildings. The staff of the Ukrainian Armed Forces highlighted some successes in the area of Andreevka, located 7 kilometers southwest of Bakhmut. Sources from Russia, on the other hand, mentioned continued military operations near Andreevka and Kurjumovka, 11 kilometers southwest of Bakhmut. The Institute for the Study of War (ISW) says that both Russian and Ukrainian sources report the impact of severe weather conditions on ongoing operations. Russian military bloggers have indicated that the weather is affecting Ukraine's offensive and Russian reconnaissance operations. Radio Free Europe relayed the words of a spokesman for the Ukrainian armed forces operating on the Eastern Front, Ilya Yevlash. According to him, Moscow is increasing the number of its reserve forces in the Bakhmut region in order to regain territory around the strategically key city. The enemy is continuing to use units for counteroffensive operations in this area to prevent us from carrying out a full-scale offensive and completely liberating this flank. He is bringing all the forces and reserves available to him to the front realizing the potential significant consequences of losing this position. These were Yevlash's words quoted by the station. The Security Service of Ukraine, SBU, jointly with the State Bureau of Investigation, DBR, arrested a businessman in the Kiev region on suspicion of transferring more than $400,000 to Russian entities in the Donetsk region, the SBU reported on October 9th. The man served as director of a foundry plant in Makayevka, a city in the Donetsk region that was temporarily occupied by the Russians in 2014. Despite the occupation, he continued to operate, exporting goods to Ukraine through intermediary companies. Such sales, circumventing restrictions imposed by the government, were intended to provide the businessman with income, much of which was transferred to Russian occupation forces as so-called taxes. 
SBU information indicates that these funds were sent through banks under sanctions in Russia and the Donbass. Immediately before the outbreak of full-scale hostilities, the suspect was said to have transferred to the occupying forces an amount exceeding $400,000, which was later used for military needs. Evidence of the businessman's cooperation with the occupiers, including documents and electronic equipment, was found during searches conducted by the services. On October 9th, Russian airstrikes on Ukrainian territory killed two civilians, while 22 were wounded, including two children. The attacks took place in the eight Ukrainian regions of Sumy, Luhansk, Nikolaev, Chernigov, Zaporizhia, Kharkiv, Donetsk, and Kherson. The worst losses were reported in the latter three. Kherson's governor, Oleksandr Prokudin, reported that on October 8th, the Kherson region experienced 53 attacks by the Russians, during which 288 shells were fired. As a result, one person was killed and 18 were injured, including two children. The attacks took place in residential areas, a parking lot, a church, and other key infrastructure facilities, among others. Ole Sinehubov, governor of the Kharkiv region, reported that more than 15 villages in his region were attacked by Russians who used artillery and mortars. One such attack in Vovchansk resulted in the death of a 60-year-old woman and at least five homes were damaged. In the Donetsk region, in the city of Kostyantinovka, a rocket attack injured four residents and destroyed 19 houses, 10 apartment blocks, and energy infrastructure according to the acting governor, Ihor Moros. In the Zaporozhye region, on the other hand, there were 11 incidents involving the destruction of buildings and infrastructure as a result of Russian attacks. According to the local administration, Russian forces carried out airstrikes on 16 settlements using artillery, aviation, and missile systems. Fortunately, no fatalities have been reported there. Russian forces are increasing their mine-laying activity in the robotine verbov area of Zaporozhye. According to an October 8th report by the Institute for War Studies, Russian military bloggers suggest that the Russian army is concentrating more resources on fortifying the area in an effort to surprise the enemy. Recently, mine-laying activities have interfered with the Ukrainians' ability to move cargo and equipment. At the beginning of the week in question, Ukrainian sources reported that Ukrainian forces had approached the forest line between the villages of Robotyne and Verbov in the Zaporozhye region, which are located roughly 6 kilometers southeast of Robotyne. This area in Zaporozhye is not the only one experiencing attacks. On October 7th, Russian troops carried out a bombardment using cluster bombs on the southeastern part of the Zaporozhye region. The attack resulted in the death of one woman and the wounding of two others. Russian forces used a multiple launch rocket system, MLRS, to launch rockets with cluster munitions around 8 a.m., according to the region's governor, Yuri Malashko, based on preliminary reports. The target of the attack was the village of Belenka, located on the Dnieper River, separated from Russian-controlled areas, about 40 kilometers south of Zaporizhia. On October 9th, the Ukrainian General Staff of the Armed Forces reported that 282,630 soldiers had been killed by the Russian side since Russia launched its full-scale invasion on February 24 of the previous year. In the last 24 hours, the Russian army suffered losses of 350 soldiers. The report also indicates significant losses in military equipment on the part of Russia. It has lost 4,823 tanks. 9,126 armored combat vehicles, 9,113 vehicles and fuel tanks, 6,706 artillery systems, 808 multiple launch rocket systems, 543 air defense systems, 315 aircraft, 316 helicopters, 5,190 drones and 20 vessels. Ukraine's high anti-corruption court has decided to end a case called Rotterdam Plus concerning a controversial increase in electricity prices between 2016 and 2019. The decision was announced on October 9th by the Specialized Anti-Corruption Prosecutor's Office. The judges justified the decision, namely, that the period allowed for a pre-trial investigation, counting from the time the suspect was served with the notice, 
had already passed. Despite this, the SAPO prosecutor disagrees with the court's verdict and plans to appeal to a higher instance, the Court of Appeals. The entire investigation, conducted by the National Anti-Corruption Bureau, focused on the issue of the Rotterdam Plus formula. This method was used by Ukraine to calculate energy prices during the three-year period in question. The idea was to include in the prices the costs associated with transporting coal from Rotterdam to Ukraine. In 2019, NABU's investigations led to the prosecution of six individuals, including officials of the State Energy Authority and members of the DT Tech Company, owned by well-known businessman Renat Akhmatov. They were alleged to have inflated costs to energy consumers by 39 billion hryvnias over the life of the formula roughly equivalent to $1 billion. Although the case had been closed several times before for lack of legal grounds, it was reactivated in September 2022, and the list of suspects expanded to include 15 more people. The first proceedings against six of them in the context of the Rotterdam Plus scandal were launched in March 2023, 